Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Brother Dial from uh, Fleming Island, Florida. I want to greet you this morning uh, in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thanking Him that we have this uh, time here, uh, as it may be. But uh, we thank Him for that. And uh, I want to greet everyone this morning uh, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. So, it's a great day, it's a good time, and uh, we've got good news. That's what he said the gospel is, it's the good news. Well, we've had some really good news in, in our day because God has uh, sent a messenger with a message to call out the elect of this time. So, uh, that's what we're... We don't have a, I don't have a message of my own. All I can do is, is to repeat what the messenger has, uh, has brought. So, and uh, we do that with assurance because he was a, a vindicated messenger. And uh, we're not ashamed of the messenger or the message no more than if I was in Paul's day, would I be ashamed of what Paul brought to the church or any, any other church ages? But this one was something special. It was supposed to come in to the end of the church ages, take all the loose ends and the mysteries and the little secrets and so on and, and put them in, we'll put it like this, in one package and give it to the people of his day. And he did. And we thank the Lord for that. So, all the mysteries and the secrets have been revealed if you believe it. And that's what the angel told Brother Brown. He said, if you can get the people to believe. And that's the same thing today. If you can get the people to believe. So, it all goes back to the individual. Can you believe? Believe what? Believe the message that's been delivered this day. Let's open up with a, a word of prayer and then just invite the Lord in. Lord Jesus, we thank you again today. Lord, it's so good to know you in the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, that resurrection on the inside that has brought life to the seed, Lord, that's raised up. And we so thank you for that. And because of that life that's been brought forth, now we're alive and we're into the kingdom of God. So, Lord, we thank you for that. And, Lord, these things that we talked about today they are kingdom things. They're not of this world as it would be so much the natural, Lord, but it's of that spiritual world that you have brought us into. So, Lord, we thank you for that and pray, Lord, that you continue to reveal yourself even to today. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we want to read a scripture. <clears throat> and I want to look over into Malachi, the fourth chapter. And if you're a follower of the message, you say, well, my goodness. Uh, but that's what we want to read, Malachi 1 through 6. Malachi, the fourth chapter. So let's start. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, in that day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness, who do you think that is? The Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And he certainly did in a healing campaign started in uh, the seven church age. And you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. 
And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this. Do what? The Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wing. Saith the Lord of hosts, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you, Elijah the prophet, before the, for before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. May the Lord add his blessings to the word. Now, <clears throat> this is going to be the, the third uh, message on by seven by nineteen seventy seven. This will be uh, part three, and so I've been trying to put them uh, in such a way that when you read one or when you hear one message, that you would have enough information to tie that one together, uh, kind of unto itself, even though that we're talking about by 1977, and that's why I want to read out of the, the uh, Legacy and Church Age in the Church Age book where we've been kind of starting off here. So let's look over into the Church Age book, and this is on page 322, and uh, I want to start with this part right here. The last and the seventh vision was wherein I heard a most terrible explosion. As I turned to look, I saw nothing but debris, craters, and smoke all over the land of America. And based on these seven <laughs> visions, along with the rapid changes which have swept the world in the last 50 years, I predict I do not prophesy that these visions will all have to come to pass by 1977. So he's given a time now that he thinks all of these things are going to be come to pass by. And though many may feel that this is an irresponsible statement, now to me, that in itself is, is important because Brother Brown knows what he's saying that the people are going to think, well, what? he's putting a time limit on something. All right, let's go ahead. In the view of the fact that Jesus said that no man knoweth the day nor the hour, the day of the hour of what? That he's going to come back. Come, the coming. I still maintain this prediction after 30 years because... <clears throat> Jesus did not say no man could know the year, the month, or the week in which his coming was to be completed. So I repeat, and I sincerely believe and maintain as a private student of the word along with divine inspiration that 1977 ought to terminate the world systems and usher in the millennium. Okay, we took from that, and he, he said he was talking about three things because these visions are, that he had are being fulfilled, and he said along with that and all these other changes, that's where he gets his, his inspiration and so on from. But we talked about the first thing was the coming the coming of the Lord, and then it was going to terminate the world systems. And number three, he was going to usher in the millennium. So in the first one, we talked about the coming of the Lord, showing that he had actually came and he had terminated the world systems, the world religious systems, because God is no longer even remotely there because they put him out. And then we talked about last week about to usher in 
the millennium. I'm talking, we were talking about what God is going to do, not what people have wrote up and so on. We're talking about God's, God's kingdom, and they're talking about man's kingdom. So today, as this, we want to take and speak about this last vision. Because he said, now, all of them is going to become the past by 1977. Well, 1977 has been long since past. We're in the, uh, 2018. So, but he said, now, this last vision was wherein I heard a most terrible explosion as I turned to look. And I saw nothing but debris, craters, and smoke all over the land of America. Okay? Now, if we take that from a natural standpoint, well, I looked across America, and with my natural eye, we don't see that. But if I look across America with a spiritual eye, that's exactly what I see. Because... And we're going to get to some statements and so on that's going to show this because the last revival that God was going to do was started here in America. And it went just back and forth all across the country for many, many years. And Brother Branham started that revival in 19... 46, the angel come to him and told him that he was going to start a worldwide, worldwide revival. And he was saying, well, how, how can I do that? I, I, you know, I'm just a, a little nobody. I don't even have it. He said, he said, you go and it'll be done. Well, Brother Random went and it was done. So that's what we want to look at today is this seventh vision. And so I got some, some uh, more statements. And the great part about this is it's not something that, well, you know, this, that, and the other. No, you can go back and you can go back and read the same things that I'm reading. So we're reading out right now out of the Church Age book. And we're on page 324. I want to read this. He said, So we see a seventh age messenger coming and he is a prophet not only do we see this messenger coming here in revelations 10 7 but we find that word speaks of elijah coming before jesus returns in matthew 17 10. and as his disciples ask him saying why then say that the scribes that elias must first come and jesus said Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. Before the coming of the Lord, Elijah must come back for a work of restoration of the church. Well, that's exactly what <clears throat> Brother Brown's ministry was. It was a restoration in the church of what? It was a restoration of the Word because the Word had been so chopped and, and added to and taken away and everything else that it was, had, they had just basically made it of non-effect to the people. And he said, this is what Malachi 4, 5 says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. There is absolutely no doubt that Elijah must return before the coming of Jesus. He has a specific work to accomplish. That work is a part of Malachi 4, 6, that says he will turn the hearts of the children to their fathers. The reason that we know this, this is his specific work to do at a time, is because he has already accomplished the part that says he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children when the Elijah ministry was here in John the Baptist, Luke 1.17. 
All right, so Eliza's already come back in John's day, and he fulfilled that part. But now the second part has to be fulfilled. And he shall go forth in the spirit and power of Elijah and turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of, of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. In the ministry of John, the hearts of the fathers were turned to the children. We know that because Jesus said so. But it does not say that the hearts of the children were turned to the fathers. This is yet to take place. The hearts of the last day children will be turned back to the Pentecostal fathers. John got the fathers ready for Jesus to welcome the children into the fold. Now this prophet upon whom the spirit of Elijah falls will prepare the children to welcome back Jesus. Okay, so Malachi 4 is going to come. The spirit of Elijah is going to be on a man, a prophet, and he's going to get us ready to welcome back Jesus. And of course, well, we'll save that for just a little bit. People have their, <clears throat> their own ideas and so on about that because they've been taught in a certain way down to the church ages and they have, have brought that church age teaching right on over into this message and he was commanded us not to do that because this was going to be a new message. He said the Bible had become a new book, but evidently they kind of like the old one. So let's go ahead here on page 325. Jesus called John the Baptist Elijah. Matthew 17, 11, but I say unto you that Elias is already, is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him, unto him what, what they listed. The reason that he called John Elijah was because the same spirit that was upon Elijah had come back upon John even as the Spirit had come back upon Elisha after the, re, that, after the reign of King Ahab. Now once again the Spirit will come back upon another man just before Jesus comes. Another man just before Jesus comes. And he will be a prophet. He will be vindicated as such by God. Since Jesus himself in the flesh won't be here to vindicate him as he did John. Uh-oh. Since Jesus himself in the flesh won't be here to vindicate him as he did John. Well, they were on the earth at the same time. John came forth preaching and he was to introduce, to identify the Messiah. That was his job. And God said, told him, he said, upon whom you see the Spirit des des descending and remaining, that'll be him. And you know the story. One day that John's out there baptizing and along comes Jesus. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And baptized him. And John, he had to diminish and Jesus come on the, on the scene. But now, now this time, it won't be like that. And he said, it will be done by the Holy Spirit. So Jesus was here in the flesh with John the Baptist, but this time he's not going to be here in the flesh. It's going to be done by the Holy Spirit. Well, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ that came back on the day of Pentecost. That was him. That was Jesus in another form that come back on the day of Pentecost. 
So Jesus won't be here in the flesh, but He's going to be here by the Holy Spirit, and He's going to vindicate this Elijah. And when people say, oh, yeah, well, you know, it won't be Jesus in the flesh. It's going to be the Holy Spirit. And they think, well, you know, this is Jesus over here and the Holy Spirit's over here. No. They're one. Jesus said, I come from God. Yes, He come from God, the beginning of the creation of God. And He had to have a, He had to be born of a woman to be a human being. To be the sinless one without sex. To pay the price. And he did. And he said, I come from God and I'm going back to God. And he come on the day of Pentecost. In that upper room there. And then he made himself known as that pillar of fire. And then he made himself known to Saul, which became Paul on the road to Damascus. And he asked him, who are thou, Lord, to this great light in the sky? And they said, I am Jesus. But no, they think that Jesus is over here. The Holy Spirit's over here. It's the same. So now, since Jesus himself won't be here, here to vindicate him in the flesh, as he did John, it will be done by the Holy Spirit so that this prophet's ministry will be attended by great and wonderful manifestation. Was it? Amen. That's what draw the attention because the people, they knew something <clears throat> When Brother Brown come on the scene, they knew there was something different. God was back with the ministry. I mean, signs and wonders, blind eyes, cripples and dead being raised, and all these things, and they, they couldn't deny it. So it was attended with great and wonderful manifestation. As a prophet, every, every revelation will be vindicated for every re revelation will come to pass. Wonderful acts of power will be performed at His commands in faith. And they were. Look here, that's not in doubt. That went around the world. And the people, even the ones that didn't like him, had to testify that God was with the man. Then will be brought forth the message. That's what all of this was to catch the attention so he could get the people's attention to bring the message. that God has given him in the Word to turn the people back to the truth and the true power of God. So, look here. This was all done so that he could turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers. And so, he was, this, was, this ministry was going to be without doubt. And it was and is. Now listen here. Some will listen. But the majority will run true to form and reject him. Did they do it? Yes. True to form. The majority will reject him. And <clears throat> I'm say this. If you reject him, is to reject his message. Because the message and the messenger are one, and the message is Christ the Word. 
So who do you reject? And look here. He didn't come to give us some old denominational teaching somewhere. Look here. He come to take us out of that. He said, come out of her. Come out of her denominations. Come out of her. Well, people come out of the, the church building. They might have come out of the denomination, but they brought her with them. What is her? Her teachings. So, everybody's looking for Jesus to come in the flesh. They're worried about that. Well, well, this one won't be by Jesus in the flesh. Now, let's go a little bit further here. Since the prophet messenger of Revelations 10.7 will be the same as Malachi Four, five, and six. He will naturally, like Elijah and John, <clears throat> both were men set apart from the accepted religious schools of their day. Both were men of the wilderness. Both acted only when they had thus saith the Lord, straight from God by revelation. Both lashed out against religious orders and leaders of their day. But not only was that so, they lashed out against all who were, who were corrupt or would corrupt others. And notice, both prophesied much against immoral women and their ways. Elijah cried out against Jezebel. John rebuked Herodias, Philip's wife. And look here. Our Elijah this day rebuked the woman, the church. He said that she had gone off, gone off the track, gone worldly. And then he said, if you want to, if you want to see what the, the church looks like, he said, just look at the woman on the street. He said, they're, they're naked and don't know it. So, it was that same spirit coming on down. Though it will not be popular, he will be vindicated by God. Amen. And he was. As Jesus authenticated John and the Holy Spirit authenticated Jesus, we can well expect this man will be the first of all authenticated by the Spirit working in his life and acts of power that are indisputable and found nowhere else. Yeah. You go back and check Brother Brown's ministry against all the other ministries that had that had rose up during this time and his ministry so eclipsed all of the others as a matter of fact most of all the others started because of his ministry when they seen what god could do and a little faith struck them but where did most of them go Brother Brown himself stayed with the Word. He compared his ministry with that of Old Roberts. He said, man, I went to Oral Place the other day. He said, I've never seen millions of dollars of buildings. He said, they got a machine there with all the, the letters coming through, getting all the checks out. And he said, if you can see my place, he said, I got a little trailer with a, a typewriter in the back. But he said, well, I guess I just, he said, if I didn't have enough sense to do something like that, he said, that would, that would order me to death. And he said, well, 
what is my portion? He said, God said, look up. Yeah, look up. But see, with that kind of ministry, without all that expense, he could go wherever he wanted to. If he wanted to go to preach to three people, he could do it. Or if he wanted to go to preach to 300 or 3,000, he could go where the Lord led him to go. And Jesus himself, in returning, Jesus himself, returning, will authenticate him even as he authenticated John. John witnessed that Jesus was coming, and so will this man, like John, witness that Jesus is coming. And the very return of Christ will prove that this man indeed was the forerunner of the second coming. This is the final evidence. Final. Jesus coming is the final evidence. Not coming down here 50, 60 years later. Jesus coming while this man's on earth. And they're looking for that. Oh, they're looking for that flesh. Oh, where, where, where? I know he's going to be here. It won't be flesh. It's going to be the Spirit. And it's going to be working through a flesh body. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yes. So, witness that Jesus is coming and the very return of Christ will prove that this man indeed was a forerunner of the second coming. This is the final evidence that this indeed is the prophet of Malachi 4. For the end of the Gentile period will be Jesus himself appearing. Then it will be too late for those who have rejected him. The ministry of the Son of Man. St. Luke 17, 30. A son of man, a prophet, revealing the son of man, the word, manifesting the word of the hour. And people I say, oh, no, no, we, we want to see, we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus, the body of 2,000 years ago. That's all we'll accept. Okay, go ahead. But this is what God has done and that was the final evidence okay now <clears throat> want to get something here out of this day this scripture is fulfilled there in Jeffersonville 1965 now remember today we're talking about that that seventh vision and we wanted to kind of lay the groundwork as we're coming into this about with this great explosion and so on. And here, in this, <clears throat> this here to me was a tremendous message because he said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled. And he gave us the ones that had been fulfilled. He said, now the prophet said, there will come a day that cannot be called night or day, a dismal day, a lot of rain and fog, just enough to know how to to join church or put your name on a book. But it shall be light about the evening time. This day, this scripture is fulfilled. So the light coming in the evening time? Okay, it's, it's here. The same, same S-U-N that rises in the east is the same S-U-N that sets in the west. The same S-O-N of God that come in the east and vindicated himself as God manifested in the flesh is the same S-O-N of God in the western hemisphere here that's identifying himself among the church tonight. 
Did you get that? The same one that was back, the same one, S-O-N, that was back on the east, is the same one that's here in the west that he's identifying himself among the church tonight, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The evening light of the sun has come. This day, this scripture is fulfilled before. And people see that and they say, well, I, you know, but you know, I believe what he said, but I still want to see Jesus. It's, you know, it's when God does all he can to <clears throat> make it where you, you would think the people could not disbelieve. But you know, there's going to be some people that they are going to fulfill what Isaiah prophesied years ago. They're going to have ears and they can't hear. They're going to have eyes and they can't see, lest they should understand. And somebody's going to fulfill that. And it looks like that somebody is in the majority. Because what did he say? The majority of them reject it. And the majority has rejected it once again. So, in the Western Hemisphere here, that's identifying himself among the church tonight. How is he identifying himself? It's the Holy Spirit using his prophet, using a man to do the same things that Jesus done 2,000 years ago with the Messiah sign, knowing the secrets of the heart and everything else. But no, that's not enough. And then he goes on in this, this day, this scripture is fulfilled. He says, where are we at in this Abrahamic age? Abrahamic age, not in, not in this church age, because he knows that we have left the church ages. We was caught up out of that. Well, is he talking about an Abrahamic age? That's when God came down in flesh and talked to Abraham. Abraham represented the believer. He says, where are we at in this Abraham age? We're in this, this great time that we're standing, the great hour that, we living, that we're living in. And he just drops this in. All the visions have been fulfilled. All the visions have been fulfilled. And people read that and they say, well, yes, all of those, but not that seventh one. Because, you know, he said, I look back in America, it was just all blowed up. Well, he looked back and America was blowed up. Why? Because, well, just hold on, we'll get there. And he goes to talking about it. He said, now, <clears throat> how about a little minister, a friend of ours here, associate in the church, Junior Jackson, come running up to us one night and be down there and said, I had a dream, Brother Bantam, and there's, it's bothered me. I seen all the brethren gathered on upon a hill and said, upon this hill, you were teaching us out of the letters that was wrote, look like. And some of the letters... That time had carved in the rock. When you finished that, all was finished. You told us, said, come close. And we all gathered up and said, you reached from somewhere and looked like got a crowbar and whipped the top off of this little pyramid open. And when it did, said granite rock and nothing and no writing on it. And you told us, look upon this. And you, we all started looking and said, and I turned my head and I noticed you going towards the west just as hard as you could towards the setting of the sun. How many remembers that? 
And I stood there a little bit till the Holy Spirit revealed it. I said, the entire Bible, as much as been revealed to man through justification, sanctification, and baptism of the Holy Ghost, and the baptism in Jesus' name, and all these things has been revealed, but there is secrets that hid inside because the Bible is sealed with seven seals. I must go there to find it. That morning when those seven angels come down and blasted the earth and rocks flew everywhere and seven angels stood there and said, return back to Jeffersonville from where you come from for the seven seals of the seven mysteries will be opened. Seven seals of the seven mysteries will be open. <clears throat> and did you catch that? He said that morning when those seven angels come down and blasted the earth. Talking about a blast that not only shook the earth, but it shook heaven as well. Because heaven was coming down the one in heaven, the mighty angel was coming down to his seventh earthly messenger to give him the revelation. And it was sure going to shake up the church. <clears throat> but the people say, well, you know, there were six seals open, but he said that, that seventh, he never did. No, when he preached, he couldn't say that because there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. But later on, he said, no one knew it was the coming of the Lord. No, well, they wasn't supposed to know because he said no man knows the day nor the hour. But he said we could know we could know the year, the month, and the week in which his coming was to be completed. And now we know that. We look back and say 1963, March, the second week. That's when he was there in Sabino Canyon on Sunset Mountain. But no, that's just, that's just too simple. We want to make it a, a great, big, mysterious thing when he's told us all the things that were happening. I mean, he told it in such simplicity, all we got to do is just read and believe. <clears throat> all right, so all the visions have been fulfilled. Amen, Brother Brown, you said it, you didn't change it. He didn't come back in the next minute and say, well, you know, uh, I said something in that message, I need to, he didn't never say, he said, all the visions have been fulfilled. Amen. That settles it. Okay, we're going to look over here to <clears throat> uh, the way of a true prophet. And that's in uh, 1963. This one here was in Phoenix. <clears throat> and he says, uh, Let me tell you this. I, I, one time I was at, and of course, when we read the message, we, we, and we're, and we read the message, we think, well, this is glorious. We don't care what Brother Brown said about this, that. We just think, glory, this is wonderful. And one day, I was doing uh, a type of construction work, going around finishing up blemishes and so on in houses. And I went in this woman's house and seemed to be a, a really a, a nice lady and so on. And she got to talk to me while I was doing whatever I was doing. She got to talk to me about, you know, she went to church and this, that, and the other. And this, this seemed to be a, um, more than most, most people didn't say nothing, especially about church. So I said, and I thought to myself, I said uh, to her, I said, do you like to read uh, about uh, maybe... Uh, about church and the Bible and so on. She said, oh yeah, I like to read. And I said, and I don't know why, but I just happened to have that book, The Way of a True Prophet, in, in my truck. And I said, well, before I leave, I want to leave this with you. And I said, you can read it. 
And so I left it. And the next time, I, I don't know, I come back, I don't remember when it was, I had to go back again for some whatever it was. And she never mentioned a word about, <laughs> about church, about nothing else. And I thought to myself, hmm. And so, no doubt, whatever was in that she read in the way of a true prophet uh, didn't sit too well with her. But this is it, the way of a true prophet. And if you hear some of these things, you say, well, my goodness, yes. And our so-called YMCAs, I wonder what that C stands for. Walk in them and you can't hardly hear nothing but the Lord's name. Is that young men's cursing society? I stayed not long ago in a hotel, was across from a YMCA, and it was a disgrace to see the little girls out there on the floor till about 9 o'clock trying to break their legs <laughs> doing the twist. That's right. And all of them members of a church and singing choirs and taught Sunday school. Nothing but the devil teaching them little children out there on the floor a system that's been made up called religion. Certainly, a true prophet would blast that thing right back into the smoke of hell where it originated at. Certainly is true. What do you say? A true prophet would blast that thing. How would he blast it? Did he have a, a flamethrower or something? No, he would blast it with the word of his mouth. But no. And uh, maybe she read some of that and said, Whoa. Like the one fellow said, yeah, I read the book and he called me a vulture. And another man read the book and he said, he called me an eagle. Well, I read it and he, I, was, I found myself on the eagle side. I found myself in the barn yard and Mama come across and said, hey, hey. And I responded and come out, come out of her. Now, <clears throat> still in this way of a true prophet, he said, you think Amos could stand on the platform and preach the gospel and look out over a bunch of bobbed-haired women and not condemn it? You think he wouldn't quote Isaiah 5 and 1 Corinthians 14? And oh, he'd pour it on that. Certainly, he, he would walk down the street and see women and these little old clothes on look like men and so tight that the skin is on the outside almost going down twisting and mincing and walking like that clinking themselves along and you think a man of god would stand in the pulpit and, and blast that thing amen when it's very seldom ever spoke from the pulpit today they couldn't speak against from the pulpit because that's what the congregation looks like man say that they all get up and walk out they call the Lord and say, get rid of that guy. What's, what's happened to him? Huh. And you think a man of God wouldn't stand in the pulpit and blast that thing? He said, that's exactly right. Wouldn't make no difference to Amos, uh-huh. So he would, one way he would say it, he wouldn't be afraid because he was anointed of the Lord. And if he had thus saith the Lord, it would have to be the Word. Mm -hmm. It would be the Word. And he would certainly blast that thing. Well, our Amos this day blasted that thing. And they said, Brother Branham, people think you're a prophet. What are you doing? You should be teaching these women about gifts and these spiritual things. And he said something so simple. He said, how can I teach them algebra when they won't even learn their ABCs? Always believe Christ. Well, that makes perfect sense to me. 
trying to get some people up on some high spiritual level and they ain't even got to, to the first step yet. There is nobody can join the church. You join a lodge. Uh-oh. Maybe this is what she read. You join a lodge. You don't join the church. You were born in a church, see? You join the Methodist Lodge, the Baptist Lodge, the Catholic Lodge, the Pentecostal Lodge. And that's all they are. It's just lodges where people meet. Because you say, well, they go to worship God. Look here. Jesus Christ, God Almighty, is not there. The Bible said He was not there. He was on the outside. They're worshiping the God of this world. The one that has given Satan's Eden. <clears throat> I was thinking about this. I don't know where I can do it with my voice or not, but when I was over in a place, it just came on my mind. It said, Moses, go down, way down to Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. And I was thinking, William Branham, go down, way down in this sinful land, tell old Satan to let my people go. Well, I heard it. I come out. Look here. He turned me loose. He had no more holes on me because I had the word for my day. Jesus Christ. Hmm. So, you join a lodge. But you have to be born into the church. I'm talking about the church with a capital C. But you're born into the church of the living God. And that's why he's coming after that church. So we have lodges, not churches. Anything can gather in that lodge. Hypocrites and everything else. But I'll let you know this right now. According to the word, there is not one hypocrite in the church of the living God. There's nothing they there but saints. Now read. Now the membership can take you in. And you think Amos wouldn't blast that? He would shake that thing to its foundation. He certainly would and did. Look here. The same spirit that was on Amos was in this Elijah this day, which was our prophet William Branham. And he did do it. And he was not afraid. He didn't have to worry about some board putting him out. Are they going to cut my salary? Or what are they going to do? He didn't worry about that. Because he had God Almighty backing him up. God had sent him out. Hmm. And that's what most people today, that's what they're scared of. Well, you know, I don't know. If I, if I preach that the Lord is coming, well, you know, uh, the congregation they ain't going to like that because they're all looking for Jesus to come out of the sky and, and they'll, <laughs> they'll sure put me out. Go ahead. Who are you obligated to? Look here. The seventh vision said there was a great explosion. And there has been. And it, and it rocked this nation from one end to the other. But it was the word of God going forth. The breach between the seven church ages and the seven seals. They're in Jeffersonville, 1963. Jesus said, He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die. 
He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Now, listen. No matter if he falls asleep in the first watch, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh, wherever he falls asleep, and he's, what's he talking about? The first watch, the first church age, all the way down to the seventh. What will happen? Question. Okay, he's all asleep. What's going to happen? The trumpet of God shall sound. That last trump will blast forth the same time. And this is key here. Same time. The trumpet of God. That last trump will blast, blast forth the same time that the last angel's given his message and the last seal is opened, that last trumpet will sound and the Redeemer comes forth to take his redeemed possessions, his church, the blood washed. Same time? All this is happening at the same time? Amen. Look here, what's he talking about? He's talking about Revelations 5. He's talking about the, the seventh seal, Revelations 8 and 1. He's talking about the trump of God. And this is all happening at the same time. Well, this took place in 1963. And the people, they're still looking. Well, have you heard the trumpet yet? My. You know, the, the carnal mind, no wonder the Bible said that it was an enemy against God because it cannot comprehend God's simple word no matter how simple He does it. And so, the majority reject him? Well, why, why does the majority reject him? Because they are carnal. You have to be born again to come into this kingdom. This kingdom is not of the world and it's not for the world. So, same time. The trumpet, last trumpet, blast for him. Same time. The last angel's given his message. And the last seal is open. Well, we know what the last, it's the coming of the Lord. That's what the prophet said. So this all happened. Boom, same time. And here we are, down here 50 something years later, and they're looking for all this still to come to pass. You're talking about blind Laodicea. But what happens? The majority will reject him. Reject who? The, 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 the messenger. And then when they reject him, they reject the message, and the message is Christ. And claiming they want him to see him. Let's get a statement here out of the seventh seal. Now, have you noticed the mysterious parts of this week? That's what it is. That's what it's been. It's been not a human being, a man. It has been the angels of the Lord. Notice. There's a witness of three sitting in here that a week ago, a little over a week ago, I was up back in the mountains near New, New, near Mexico with two brothers that sitting here and I was picking a cockleboard or a sandsword off of my trouser leg and a blast went, up, went off 
look like it shook the mountains down. That's right. And I never told my brother, but noticed a difference. And he said to me, get now, get ready, go east. So he said, look here. And they thought it was just a man. He said, that's what they didn't notice, that mysterious thing that was taking place. They thought it was just a man. And it was the angels of God. Because he said an angel met him in that room every day and gave him the revelation. And he said, it was contrary to what I thought. But he said, when an angel stands there, then you go back in the Word and you say, glory to God, I see it. Not some of this old denominational makeup stuff. I'm talking about the real, true Word of God in the revelation of Jesus Christ. But he said he kept watching for the people, to, but they, they, they just never seemed to catch it. Okay, this is the faith of Abraham there in uh, 1959 in California. And this is going to kind of, this should encapsulate the whole thing about what God has been doing. Because all the visions have been fulfilled, and that includes the seventh vision. And you say, oh no, America's going to burn. Yeah, well, Peter said it's going to, this world is going to burn with fervent heat. Brother Brown said that they've got a bomb that's got our name on it. So there's no doubt that it's going to get a natural burning. He said in the future home, this thing is going to burn. But it has to be burnt spiritually before it gets to the natural part. And it has been. Faith of Abraham. Jesus explained it when he said, a fisherman, when, you know, when people read these messages, they say, well, you know, this is, this is Brother Brown. You know, he, he really knew how to bring things out. Yeah, he knew how to bring things out because he was led of the Spirit. It was not just a man giving us a message it was God himself bringing forth the word. And he always uses man. But that's what messes everybody up. <clears throat> Jesus explained it when he said, A fisherman went down to the lake and threw it in a net. And when they enclosed many and pulled it in, why? Some of them were fish. And some were all kinds. There were spiders, tarpons, frogs, and everything. Well, that's the fisherman. He said, I'm a fisherman. These are fishermen. They're fishing on every corner of the lake. I come along and cast my net in with them fishing in this corner. I pull out what what all of the gospel net enclosed. I pull it in. Some of them are fish. Now this is a simple story. And some of them, because this net, when it goes, whatever it is, it just pulls it out. It wasn't, it wasn't selective, just said, well, I'm just gonna pull it in the fish. Said, no, whatever gets in that net is coming to the shore. And some are fish, and some are turtles. Some are serpents and some of them are frogs. Some of them are crawfish and spiders. Let me give you a little illustration. First thing you know, the old turtle sticks his head up out of his shell and says, Huh, I don't, I don't like this old hole in this anyhow. <laughs> Boy, we, we heard that. Well, you make the women dress in such a way, you know, they can't do this and they can't wear the high heels and they can't put on the lipstick and rouge and everything else. Y'all are so silly. Yeah. Go on back, turtle. Creep, creep, creep. Right back into the mud he will go. That's the way he will do. Yet, 
He come down to the altar and he's caught in the gospel net. How many turtles have been caught in the gospel net? Huh. But where, they didn't stay. They left. And now, here's Mrs. Spider. She looked around and said, Huh, can't have no bridge parties. You have to be different. Dress different, act different, plump, 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 right back into the water again. See, what was it? She was a spider to begin with, a turtle to begin with, and a fish to begin with. God is after fish. He's after his predestinated. Now, there's... So many fish in this lake that's going to make up the body of Christ. And that's the reason in America my meetings is not so successful. The body, the body's about completed. America is a burnt over territory. 1959. America is a burnt over territory. Well, what do you think it is in 2018? 1959. My goodness. There were churches everywhere. And people believed a little something. And now you can't even hardly mention God. And they wonder, well, what's happened to our schools? Well, it's simple. You keep the Prince of Peace out. And you let the devil in. That's what happened. I mean, that's so simple. And they, well, we've got to fix this. And we've got to, oh, we're going to spend $500 million over here. And we're going to spend $2 billion over here. I don't care if you spend $20 billion. If you don't change the inside... What difference does it make? So America is a burnt over territory. What was it burnt over with? With the gospel. There's been Oral Roberts, Billy Grahams, Jack Schuller, A.A. Allens, and all these different kinds of saints back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, till it's practically everything is saned out. But remember, Brother Brown, he never went to Sodom. He stayed with the elect. Sodom wouldn't have him. They said, oh, that guy, he's, he's crazy. He's weird. He gets up and balls the women out because they got short hair and they got their tight dresses and high heels. Oh no, we couldn't have that. Yeah, and you no, know, they didn't have it, and they won't have it. You know, Billy Graham just passed away here what, about a week ago, week ten days, and Brother Graham said he had that message of grace in town. He can go in these big stadiums of this, I guess, hundreds of thousands of people of whatever. And he'd give a, give a little simple message and, and call, and they'd come down. And Brother Brown said that he'd have, he said he'd have 30,000 converts and come back, and he couldn't find 30. What happened? He got a bunch of turtles. Look here. When you get born again, there is nothing in this world that can unborn you. People can make all the decisions they want to. But until God comes down and changes something on the inside, you ain't nothing but just a church member. So old Mrs. Spider, what happened? Right back. Old turtle, everything else. All he was interested in was the fish. And this is 
Hear ye him in Klamath Falls, Oregon. He said, God's able these, God's able to raise up children unto Abraham from the stones. But we must be honest and tell the truth about it. Did you notice? Oh, certainly. The ministry in America does not nothing like it does overseas. Certainly not. Because America is a burnt over territory. She's finished. It's raped over back and forth. America is a burnt over territory. And the gospel went forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Gleaning and saning and getting the predestinated out of there. And he come in this last day to, with the real true word. And he come to call forth his people. You know, Brother Graham said, the, the ministry in America, he said, you know, as a matter of fact, one of these messages, he was talking about, he said, I went into to Puerto Rico. He said, I was there nine nights. And he said, they counted, we had like 40,000 converts. He said, you couldn't do that in America. Went into Durban, South Africa. 30,000 converts, he said, of just blanket natives. They seen God at one time. And they, in America, seen it time and time. Just went through the whole audience and your name is this, that, and the other. And you've got this. And this is what's wrong. And this is what caused it. Knowing the very secrets of the heart. He said, well, you know, we're looking for Jesus. America is without excuse. No excuses. America had the last revival, and such a revival it was. Because it was the last and final one. So, the explosion, yeah, it was finished. All the visions had been fulfilled. It was completed, and the people didn't even know it. And that's how most of what God does, it goes unnoticed. It's the unrecognized presence of Jesus Christ. And they claim that they're still looking for him. Well, he has made himself so known this day. But look here. You had to have something on the inside to identify with what God has brought and is, is bringing even yet to this day. So, praise the Lord. All the visions have been fulfilled. And that includes the seventh vision. And it was all done by 1977. He said, I bring this along with divine inspiration. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you again today. Lord, truly, he said, if you can get the people to believe, they'll nothing stand before the prayer, not even cancer. So it has to be believed, Lord, or it's made of non-effect. And Lord, there are people on this earth, this day, that believe exactly what you have done and what you have said. And Lord, I count myself as one of those. So Lord, I pray that you will continue to let your voice go forth. Not talking about what's going to happen, but showing what has happened to get the people hopefully to identify with it. So Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word and for your spirit. May God continue to, to help us now as we endeavor to bring forth your word. And we give you the praise and thank you so much, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.
God bless you.